The two scenarios that follow illustrate how successful dropout prevention strategies could result in additional funds that can be reallocated to support at-risk students. It is important to note that these scenarios are hypothetical. We're not arguing that keeping more students is going to result on a return on an investment, or are we saying that additional funds would fully cover the cost of both educating and supporting these students. Investments may precede additional funding, and as noted earlier, each district's Chapter 70 situation is unique. Scenario 1 uses a number of high-risk and very high-risk students as defined by the Early Warning Indicator Index that Secretary Rubble mentioned earlier as a basis for financial planning. At the start of the current year, there were 10 districts with over 100 incoming ninth graders assigned to the high and very high risk levels. Of these 10 districts, only one spends more than its foundation budget. The number of ninth grade students in the remaining nine districts that are at a high or very high risk level range from 122 in Fall River to 500 in Springfield. If we consider that the average per pupil funding through Chapter 70 for these districts is about $9,000, the financial impact of keeping all these students in school would be sizable, ranging from $1.1 million in Fall River to $4.5 million in Springfield. Scenario 2 uses the goal of reducing the dropout rate in half by 2014 as a basis for financial planning. For this example, we look at a fictional dis district that has 160 students who drop out each year, and they want to cut that dropout rate in half within four years. To do this, a district would have to, or could, reduce its dropout rate by 20 students per year over the four years. So 20 students the first year, 40 the next, 60 and so on. To calculate the additional revenue requires making some assumptions about a district's chapter 70 situation and the distribution of students across all grade levels. And there are more details upon these assumptions and how they relate to these scenarios in the policy brief. Using a simple formula, it's clear that efforts to cut dropout rates in half can result in a substantial increase in enrollments. As you see, by year three, we have 100 additional students who are enrolled, bringing in $900,000 to the district. By year four, 150 additional students enrolled, bringing in over $1.3 million to the district. These scenarios are intended to illustrate that it may be possible for some districts to invest in at-risk students to be self-sustaining, provided that additional revenue generated through increased enrollments can cover the cost of both educating and supporting these students. Districts, of course, would have to modify these assumptions based upon their own enrollments and their student characteristics and the nature of their foundation budget. We offer considerations for school and district leaders. As noted in Scenario 1, the Early Warning Indicator Index can be a tool to help inform budget discussions and shape decisions to reallocate investments to support at-risk students. When combined with locally relevant indicators of at-risk students, along with data on the impact of specific strategies that have been put in place to support these students, these tools can help target investments in those strategies that are most successful for students. <coughs> Strengthening efforts to re-engage students who have dropped out is really an untapped opportunity that could have a substantial impact on reducing the number of citizens in Massachusetts without a high school diploma. <coughs> and research is clear that supporting students' academic and social success across the K-12 continuum is critical for prevention. As the findings suggest, implementing such a strategy involves building a shared vision and engagement among all staff. As teachers are being held to higher expectations to support both the academic growth and social well-being of students, additional supports and resources will be necessary to build their capacity to be more effective. <coughs> We'd also like to offer considerations for state policymakers. Districts need substantial funding streams, and sustainable funding streams, to support dropout prevention efforts. And we believe that the statewide initiatives that are going to be implemented through the Race to the Top grant, as well as the high school graduation initiative, 
will provide state education leaders an opportunity to build upon these investments. When we consider the importance of data analysis to this work, we need to continue to develop and expand access to data collection and analysis tools for schools and districts to improve their efforts. As the findings suggest, community partners are essential ingredients in a number of strategies to support at-risk students. The state should consider providing seed money to scale effective partnership-based programs and enhance districts' ability to collaborate more effectively. And finally, if the state is to achieve the goal of reducing dropout rates in half within four years, it is critical that we have a coordinated effort to build our to build a coordinated effort to facilitate outreach to dropouts and to provide districts information on students who have already dropped out. When we are successful in engaging them, we will need alternative education options that are workable for these students and address their individual needs.